Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hi, this is Joel Brzezinski and Mike Kapler. Up five notches this week, the number 18. Oh, no, Casey sorry. Casey Kasem. <laughs> That's right. Well, be, before we hopped on here, I was listening to some Casey Kasem. Top 40 from the 1980s. Kind of fun. Here on the local radio, and maybe you have it where you're at, around the country, and maybe around the world, I'm not sure, but they have, uh, on Saturdays, we get the Casey Kasem from the 70s, and on Sundays, we get the Casey Kasem from the 80s, and it's, uh, I enjoy those. It's, it's fun listening to good old Casey. Keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> And keep yeah. reaching for the stars. <laughs> keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I appreciate hearing. And, and you know, sometimes you hear a, a really good song that you hardly ever hear anymore. I don't. And I'm sitting there thinking, why don't I ever? I never hear this song anymore. They should play it on the on the local classic station. Yeah, I, I think the same thing too. I've even written to them before saying, <laughs> could you um, shake up your uh, playlist a little bit? Because there's a whole two decades <laughs> that you can choose music from. But anyway, that's just a, yes. my, my own commentary <laughs> on the music. Well, are you going to repent from having said that? No, I stand by it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, repentance. Where are we going to go with this? We I, I brought up Luke Luke twenty four last week. I, no, that was I think an interesting you brought up choice Acts, of yours. You? Oh yeah, Acts, and I think we got into. Um, you were going to bring up. Luke, but yeah, it was Acts that I had brought up. You're right. Yeah, Acts 2.38, after, after they preached that message after Pentecost, oh, what shall we do? What shall we do? Okay, we, we heard your message. Wow, this is heavy stuff. This Jesus that was crucified is the Savior of the world. Oh, well, what should we do? Repent, Peter said. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the point you made last week, Joel, was that, and I think I first heard this from many years ago, long before my grace walking days, I I think I heard Chuck Swindoll point out some things about the language here in that the word F-O-R, for, for the forgiveness of sins, uh, it it can mean to, to get or because of, and to be consistent with scripture in this situation, um, it would be because of. It's because of the forgiveness of sins now. You can have a change of mind and believe in Jesus Christ. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because forgiveness of sins has been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't repent and get baptized to get the forgiveness of sins. Um, and you pointed out briefly last week that it's, it's water baptism doesn't save you, and we're not going to get into that topic right now. But that's the point here, though, is that the, the consistency throughout the Scripture has to be interpreted in this way. It's because of the forgiveness of sins. Along that same line, as you were mentioning, Luke 24, now this is after the resurrection, and, and Jesus uh, walks in on his disciples, one of those wall scenarios where you're just sitting there hanging out, uh, half afraid because you know this Jesus had died, and now you're just you're hanging out hiding from other people who might do harm to you. And Jesus comes walking in, and they were startled in Luke 24. Whoa, he says, "Peace be to you." But they were startled and frightened, thought they were seeing some sort of a ghost or something or a spirit. Um, Why are you troubled? Jesus said. Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands. See my feet. Touch me. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bone, as you see that I have. And it's interesting, though, verse 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still could not believe it because of their joy, and they could not believe it (laughs) because of their joy and amazement, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? So it's nice to know Jesus hasn't really changed much. It seems like (laughs) everywhere this guy was going, there was food. (laughs) So here's some fish. But here's the point I want to get to. He began to open up the scriptures to them about the things that were written about him in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and how they must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. That had to be such a revelation to these guys, even though he was probably just skimming the surface and maybe took things even deeper when he met with the Apostle Paul after the the, uh, Damascus experience. But he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins, I'm in, the, I'm in the NASB right now, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. So there it is again, though, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed. Uh, repentance, not just to get forgiveness of sins, but because forgiveness of sins had been proclaimed, now we can have a change of mind. In, instead of working through the law, and, and trying to keep regulations, trying to keep the works from that law in order to attain forgiveness and righteousness. Now there's a change of mind, a repenting that takes place, as you said in the Greek, that means to have a change of mind. And, and so that's what Jesus is talking about here. There's this repentance that's taking place because of the forgiveness of sins. And, and I, I realize that some Bibles will say, and forgiveness of sins instead of for. The later manuscripts read, and forgiveness. This one in the NASB says, for forgiveness. But there's these little things to dice up sometimes when we're, when we're looking at the scriptures, and we need to look at them in context and with the consistency of the rest of the scriptures. The other thing I would point out here, Joel, is right before he said that about repentance, he said it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. I, I challenge somebody to specifically find that word for word in the Old Testament. I couldn't find it, but it's in there somehow. And and Jesus, because you see, that's what the Old Testament was for. It was really to point people to Christ. And there's a lot of um, hidden things in there that I think we have a hard time latching onto. I mean, even just, just as an example, Jesus used Jonah in the heart of the fish you know, in that big whale or whatever you want to call him. He was in the heart of the fish for three days and three nights. Jesus used that as an illustration of his death and resurrection. So I just find that interesting as he was opening up the scriptures here to the to the apostles. Yeah. No, you're right. And, and so many of these, what we see as maybe little things, but they, they are so very important. I mean, one little word, the definition of a word can make a world of difference. And so the things that you're bringing out here are very important. And going back just again to emphasize again the word repentance itself and the word repent, we did talk about this a week or two ago, but just to emphasize it again and, and to remember that what repentance means in, in English, if you look in an English dictionary and you look for the word repent or repentance, it's going to have to do with changing your behavior. You know, it's having sinned and turning from sin or having done something bad and turning from that. Now, Nothing wrong with that, but that's not what the word means in the Greek. The word repent or repentance, uh, there's a noun there and there's a verb, and it, and it means to think differently or afterwards. It means to change your mind, to have a change in what you think. And so the way that we have received the forgiveness of sins is not has nothing to do with our behavior. This is kind of the point in, in a lot of what we're saying here, although it is good to bring out these these little words here. The main thing here is that repentance means to change your mind. You have this thought that somehow your works will save you, or, or maybe for some people they're thinking that because of their works, because of their bad works, they can't be saved. You've heard people say, ah, you know, I've sinned too much. You know, forget about me. Don't even try preaching to me because I've I've gone way too far for God to even think about forgiving me. Well, again, <laughs> his forgiveness has nothing to do with how bad you've sinned or how good you've been. It doesn't have anything to do with your behavior. Nothing whatsoever to do with your behavior. Again, is it good to change your behavior? Certainly. But salvation, justification, righteousness has nothing to do with that. And so repentance means stop thinking that it's about your behavior and turn to thinking, turn to faith toward God. Like we were talking about in in, uh, Hebrews 6, I think last week, repentance from dead works, which is the thinking that your works have anything to do with righteousness or salvation and turn in faith toward God because the gospel 
as Paul talks about in Romans 1, 16 and 17, what's revealed in the gospel is God's righteousness. And God's righteousness is something that no one could ever touch as far as our own works. I mean, think about this. If repentance really had to do with our works, you know, Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And so people will say, you need to change your behavior. You need to turn from your sins and and believe the gospel. That's not what Jesus was saying. If he was saying that, who has repented enough? That is, who has turned from their sins enough? Who has stopped sinning enough? What point is it at which a person can stop sinning enough where they can say, okay, I've repented of my sins and now I'm worthy of, of, of being saved or now I'm righteous. Now I've been made holy. Now I've been justified because I've turned from my sins. Who among us can say that? What's the point? What's the line that a person can cross where they can finally say, I've, I've repented enough? There isn't. There isn't. Because if you fall short in only one area, you've fallen short of the glory of God. You've broken the law. You've not lived up to the holy standard of God. And you've totally missed it. You've totally, completely missed it if you even fall short in one part. You know, James <laughs> James talks about that. So repentance has absolutely nothing to do with our works. has everything to do with what we believe. Oh boy, good stuff. Um, because yeah, that, that's it. And, and and it is important to point out, as you did already, that you see th- th- we've just turned this inside out, people. Uh, we we live from who we understand that we've been declared to be as a righteous and holy, forgiven and perfected individual, not at trying to work at becoming that. Okay, and once we begin to understand who we are. Uh, not only how God sees us, but who we have been created to be in Christ, then we can start living from there. It's, it's like starting at the finish line, as I like to say. It's a, it's a race that we run, but we get to start at the finish line. And, you know, the finish line, that's, that's a place of rest. I mean, that, that, that's where people unwind and, and uh, you know, stop having to run so hard. And, and there, there might be more to say about this, and I, I, I hesitate to, to jump into it here with a minute left, but maybe maybe we can tease it here just a little bit because you see and you you nailed it though Joel with you, how how do you know when you've reached that place of repentance based on your actions it's not what Jesus was talking about because these people were endeavoring to keep that that law by the way a law in which our churches completely tell us that we have to try to follow but they only advocate for a fraction of them. (laughs) Well, these Jewish people weren't like that. They were trying to do the whole thing, and they always fell short. So that's why the repentance, the change of mind, needed to take place from pursuing righteousness through that endeavor, through through those works, uh, into realizing that righteousness would be gifted, and we can live from that now, because we've been set free from sin. We don't want to live any longer in that. That doesn't mean that sin doesn't occur uh, with every thought, every word, every action that we make. But now we can live in a place of of righteousness and perfection, uh, apart from a sin consciousness. Um, So we're going to talk some more uh, about forgiveness uh, because of the result of what Jesus did on our behalf. I hope you'll join us next week on the Growing in Grace podcast. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.